Hey, what's up everyone? Kevin here. Today I'm snowboarding in Cardrona, New Zealand, and I want to share with you guys five mistakes to avoid when buying snowboard gear. It can be very common to make mistakes when buying gear. I've done it many times, so hopefully I can share with you guys some tips so that you can avoid all these mistakes. Starting off with your goggle and helmet setup. The biggest mistake you can make when buying goggles or helmets is not trying these on together. You wanna make sure that your goggles seamlessly fit comfortably with your helmet. So it's important to try on the goggles first and then make sure that the brim of the helmet lines up with the top of your goggles. By having this seamless fit between your goggles and helmet, it's gonna prevent the wind and cold getting into your face and head and just overall making you have an uncomfortable day on the mountain. You may think that all goggles and helmets would be compatible, but you'd be surprised at how many don't actually fit together at all. So it's important just to try out a few pairs and find that perfect, comfortable, and seamless fit. The second most common mistake has to do with outerwear and choosing a snowboard jacket or pants that are too small or restrictive. I think a good rule is to get a size up from what you would normally wear in your normal day-to-day -day life. You also want to try on the gear and move around in it like you would be snowboarding to see if the materials are going to be flexible and if they have some stretch to them. Because as you're snowboarding, you want to be able to get into the movements you need to be in and just feel free and comfortable in your outerwear. I've made the mistake a few times of buying snowboard pants or jackets that are restrictive and it really does take away from my performance on my board just because I can't move freely. The third most common mistake is getting snowboard boots that are either too big or too small. I've made the mistake a few times of getting boots a half size too small, thinking that they would pack out with some use. But from my experience with having that slightly too small boot, it just turns into foot pain on the mountain, which really just makes you overall have a terrible time snowboarding if your feet are killing you and sore. So one of the most common things I think that takes people out of snowboarding is foot pain. So take your time, spend a lot of time in the boot to make sure that you're getting the right size. On the other side, if your snowboard boots are too big, your foot's gonna be moving around in your boot, your heel is gonna be lifting up out of the boot on your toe turns, and you're not gonna be able to transfer your movements into your board like you should be able to with a well-fitted boot. So take your time when buying snowboard boots to find that perfect size. The next mistake is buying snowboard bindings that aren't compatible with the rest of your gear. There are actually a few different ways that snowboard bindings connect to your board. So you wanna make sure the system is consistent from the binding to the board. For my setup, I have the four hole binding system which connects to a board that can take those four screws. But in other setups like Burton, you have an EST system which works on a channel. You also wanna make sure that the size of the bindings fit with the snowboard. So I have a large binding with a wide snowboard. If your bindings are medium, then you can go with a regular width board. And then finally, you also wanna make sure that the size of your boots fit with the bindings. And for that, just check the sizing chart. So the final mistake to avoid is getting a snowboard that is the wrong size for you. And this is probably the easiest one to avoid because all you have to do is follow the sizing chart on the website for whichever snowboard you're interested in. So for me, I'm 195 pounds and the sizing chart tells me that I belong on about a 159 snowboard. So my park board is 159. It also depends on your shoe size. So again, just following the sizing chart, but for me, I I have a 10 and a half boot and so I ride a wide snowboard as well because I don't want to have any toe or heel overhang. So really easy to avoid, just check the sizing chart. The first time I ever bought a board, I made the mistake of getting one that was just way too big for me, too wide, and it just turned out to be too much board to handle. And once I got a board that was the right size, it just helped me progress so much faster and made snowboarding a lot more enjoyable. Thank you. 
So I hope these tips will help you avoid these five common mistakes. If I miss something, it'd be great to hear from you down in the comments. I'll also put links to all my gear down in the description if you wanna check it out. If you haven't yet, subscribe here to Snowboard Pro Camp. Thank you so much for watching and have fun at their snowboarding.